good morning students today we deal the questions on functions and how to solve the functions using invertible functions i recall once again about invertible function a function f is said to be invertible if f is 1 1 and on to function i will give another direct definition a function f is mapping from x to y is said to be invertible function if there exists a function g mapping from y to x such that g circle f is identity on x and f circle g is identity on y then g is called the inverse of a function f and it is denoted by g is equal to f inverse if f is invertible g is a function y such that x y to x such that g circle f is i x and f circle g is equal to i y we say that g is called the inverse of the function if f is invertible then f must be 1 1 and on to conversely if f is 1 1 and on to then f must be invertible function it helps us in finding the inverse of a function for 1 1 and on to functions when inverse is not also be determined so i will solve a question based on this one let f is mapping from x to y be an invertible function show that f has a unique inverse we know that f has only one inverse that we have to show how f has a unique inverse suppose f has two inverses we will assume that solution let g1 and g2 be two functions or two inverses with the inverses of f what is the given given that f is a invertible function it is invertible function this implies f is 1 1 and on to let g1 g2 be the be the inverses of f then i will write f circle g of g1 y is equal to i y is equal to f circle g of 2 of y by the definition of invertible function f circle g is equal to i y is identity function on y so let f has two inverses they may be g1 and g2 then f circle g1 y is equal i y is equal f circle g2 y this implies i open the bracket it becomes f of g1 y is equal to f of g2 y it is true since f is 1 1 function then this is equal g1 y is equal to g2 y i think you can understand easily since f is 1 1 function so f of g1 y is equal f of g2 y is equal to g1 y is equal g2 y because by the definition of 1 1 function fx1 is equal to fx2 this implies x1 is equal to x2 so g1 y is equal to g2 y so now what about this one both g1 and g2 are equal functions they are equal we are assumed that g1 g2 be the inverses of f it means that f has only one inverse so therefore f has only one inverse that means f has a unique inverse so there ends the solution of the given question i think you can understand easily the question next i will go to second question from the textbook consider f is a 
mapping from 1 to 3 to a comma b comma c given by f1 is equal to a, f2 is equal to b and f3 is equal to c. Find f inverse and show that f inverse is equal to f inverse of inverse is equal to f. See children, I will read once again the question. Consider a function is a mapping from the set 1 to 3 to the set a b c. It is given by f 1 is equal to a, f 2 is equal to b, f 3 is equal to c. So, then show find the value of f inverse and show that the inverse of inverse function is a f. So, before going that one, I will take the given values and in mapping form. f 1 is equal to a, this is equal to a is equal to here, it is 1 and f 2 is equal to b and f 3 is equal to c. See here in the mapping, so the image of a has a pre image 1 in the first set, like that there is no elements blank left blank in another set. So, it is clearly a, a 1 1 function. So, I will write, so therefore, f is equal to a 1, sorry children, f is equal to 1 a, it is 2 b, it is equal to 3 c. So, we can also define the inverse of the function from this set to e is a 1 b 2 and c 3. The range of this function a uh, function f is equal to the domain of the f inverse. So, I will write f inverse is equal to a 1 b 2 and c 3. This is the f inverse set. By changing the rows and uh, domain elements of the domain to range of the range of the other function. So, it becomes a 1, b 2, c 3. Now, we have to find the inverse of the function. The inverse of f inverse is equal to apply the same method, we can get 1 comma a, 2 comma b and 3 comma c. So, observe the situation here or both f inverse of inverse is same as f. Yes, it is true that both are equal. So, I can write this is equal to f. So, therefore, f inverse inverse of f inverse is equal to f. So, this is the solution of the given question. See the children, the question is let f is mapping from x to y be invertible function. We want to show that the inverse of f inverse is f. That means, f inverse inverse is equal to f. So, given that the function f is invertible function. So, we know that the function f is invertible means it is 1 1 and on 2 implies f is 1 1 and on 2. There is a function g is a mapping from y to x is 1 1 and on 2 such that g circle f is i x and f circle g is i y. Now, see here f is a mapping from a to b an element x to y that is y is equal to f x and this so, draw this one, this becomes a g function, it is f inverse. So, g is equal to f inverse here. So, so g circle f is a identity function on x. So, by associative law, g inverse of g circle f is a g inverse circle i x. So, this is a by associative of the functions g inverse circle g circle f is equal to g inverse circle, g inverse circle i x. So, this implies g inverse circle g is equal to i, we know that. So, i circle f is equal to g inverse circle i. This implies i circle f is equal to is function f, i circle f is a, a function f is equal to g inverse circle i is also equal to g inverse. This implies f is equal to g inverse, but g is the inverse of a function f. So, I replace this one, so f is equal to inverse of f inverse. So, therefore, so we can prove this as a inverse of a function is a f is a f. 
today I will discuss the topic binary operations. Dear children, the binary operation means it is a operation associated with the two numbers. I will take an example that n is the set of natural numbers 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma so on plus of 2 comma 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, it belongs to the set of natural numbers n. The sum of two numbers is also 5, it is also a set of natural numbers, it is a plus is a, a binary operational set of natural numbers. Another example, minus, I will take true numbers, 2 minus 3 is minus 1, minus 1 does not belong to n. So, minus is not in a binary operational set of natural numbers. Next, let A is a 1 set 1 comma minus 1. What is A cross A? A cross A is equal to 1 minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1. The multiplication, I am taking a multiplication. The multiplication set in a cross table I will show it 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. Multiplication of the two numbers 1 minus 1 is minus 1 and 1 minus 1 minus 1 is equal to plus 1. These elements belongs to the set A. So, the multiplication is a binary operation on A cross A to A. So, I will define operation definition binary operation. Binary operation is an operation it is a, ma is a function from A cross A to A are defined by star A comma B is a, a star B for every A comma B belongs to the set A. This is also called as a closely binary operation. So, these are examples for binary operations. A very good afternoon everybody that uh, the topic that I would be continuing after Mr. Ravi Kishore is uh, binary operations of uh, chapter 1 and the last and final topic of chapter 1 is binary operations. Dear children what exactly the binary operation? Let me explain the word itself binary, binary in the sense to. Now operation, what is it binary operation? An operation that brings, that brings two entities together. That means, in mathematics we have many such operations. For, to, to brief you, say for example, set of natural numbers, you have 1, 2, 3 and so on so forth. You take plus operation on n. Now, you choose any two elements, whatever you feel like, say 3 comma 2. Now, I have added them, you get the result of this is 5, it belongs to n. Now, you take the same thing plus on 2 comma 3, still it is 5, you find it is commutative because we know that 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2 commutative. Now, I just would like to give you a small uh, information here. Now, on the same object to 2 comma 3, you take minus operation, what happens? 2 comma 3 is equal to minus 1, it does not belong to capital N. Now, what exactly you have observed? You have observed that when you have added the same objects, plus operation is giving you the result. The end result is belonging to the same set from which you have taken these two elements. In fact, 2 and 3 are the natural numbers we have taken, added this, op put an operation plus. When we have uh, applied this operation, the re end result was the same. But you have taken the same natural numbers, 2 comma 3, but when you have applied minus, the end result was not belonging to the set n. Similarly, you go for multiplication 2 comma 3, 2 3s are 6, 6 belongs to capital N. So, my, the same take definition of that division 2 comma 3, it is 2 by 3 which you can say says to 0 0.6, it does not belong to capital N. So, a fraction cannot exist in, a rational number cannot exist in set of natural numbers. What exactly at the outset we are understanding is that? When you have added to the same pair, when we have added the same pair, you got a number which belongs to capital N. While subtraction he is not able to satisfy the condition that I require, the multiplication is satisfying, division is not satisfying. Now, in the out of the four operations we have performed, plus and into the are called binary operations. Don't you really think it is quite interesting 
in spite of the fact uh, there is an end result, yet I have discarded the minus and the plus, uh, the division, but I have taken, I have chosen plus and into only y. What is the reason for this? The reason for this, if you want to call an operation as binary operation, the basic condition is that, uh, that operation should give an end result that will be belonging to the same family from where the two elements have been chosen as such to perform the operation. If you do not get the end result, now the plus and uh, as I told you that plus and multiplication are only the binary operations but the remaining minus and division are not binary operations. Dear children, you must understand one important fact here. Why I have chosen plus and multiplication only but the discarding minus and the division? The reason is that the end result is a very prominent. If you see the end result, the end result if not belonging to the same family from where you chose the two objects to perform the operation, then that particular operation is called non-binary. If it is, if the end result is belonging to the same family, then we call it as a binary operation. Why? Because the basic thumb rule is an operation, an operation is called binary if it is closed by that operation that means what does it mean closed means when you operate any two objects by taking from the family the end result should take you back to the family that means you have come out of the family and you are going into the family by the product if you do not complete this circle i mean the cycle then in that case, you will be away from the family. So, the basic thumb rule of binary operation is that, that operation should facilitate you to go back to your family. Otherwise, it is not a binary operation. This property is also in mathematics called closure property. The closure property in the sense, the property which ensures the closedness. That means, this is what we call closedness. We are coming out of the family and again reaching to the family. This is what we call binary operation. I hope you, have you must have understood about binary operation. Well, dear children, we have ended with the uh, closure property. Now we shall be moving on to some algebraic properties of the binary operation. Please remember, these properties play a pivotal role in understanding the binary operation. One is the commutative property. As I have already explained you, commutativeness is when you take any two objects and perform an operation, that operation when it is performed in a reverse direction, it should be yielding the same value that is belonging to the set from which the two elements